so excited to sit down and chat books with you today. I love to read all year round, but reading during the Christmas season is one of my most favorites. Getting in my PJs, having a warm cup of tea, cozy under a blanket, with the lights from the Christmas tree and the twinkle lights around me and the fireplace going, there's just something about that that sets my heart on fire. It brings me a little peace in a very busy season. And so I have created a little stack of books that I would like to visit this month. I may or may not get to all of them, but they're there and ready for me to pull from when I have a moment to read. And I thought I would share them with you today in case you two are looking for some holiday books to read this Up month. first is The Red Sioux Diaries by Ed Bichart. I'm so excited to read this one. So this is a story of a professional Santa Claus. He talks about the things that happen whenever he is acting as Santa Claus, the things that little kids whisper in his ears, the letters that they bring to him. And I think he runs some sort of a Santa training facility, so he talks about that. And then on the back it even says, and how he came to meet Mrs. Claus. So I'm guessing it has a little bit of a romance story in here as well. It's short and sweet and perfect. I mean, it's the perfect book for this time of year, right? But like, when else would you read this? Um, up next, I have another one that I really hope I get to this month. It is um, A Christmas Feast by Kate Ford. So she's a pretty well-known author. I've never read anything by her before, but she has several books out. This is a short story collection, which I think is great for December. Um, and they're just different like romances centered around Christmas and the winter season. There's one about a girl who gets snowed in in Italy. There's another one about a girl who gets snowed in in Scotland with an attractive male author. Hello. Um, some sort of like Christmas mix-up happens over holiday bookings so just light sweet and fun and I like that when I'm busy and I feel like uh, there's no way I can take on a whole book I can sit down and just read a short story and feel like I've actually accomplished something so that's a great book for this month up next I have um, the city Baker's guide to country living by Louise Miller I actually picked this one up last Christmas and I loved it. I enjoyed it so much, but for whatever reason, I didn't finish it. I don't know why. Um, this isn't necessarily a Christmas book, but it is a book that's broken down in seasons. So there's the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter, and um, it takes place, well, part of the book takes place in a little tiny country town, and don't we all love a cute book set in a little country town that has something to do with Christmas in it? The Christmas section, even though I mentioned earlier it's broken down into seasons, the Christmas section's a pretty big chunk of the story. Um, so it tells, it tells the story of this girl, she lives in the city, she's a baker in the city at a really big hotel, something crazy happens to make her flee the hotel and escape to the country where her best friend lives. Um, she ends up taking on a baking position in an old rundown hotel and thus the story unfolds. She, um, she meets lots of witty characters. Of course, it's set in a country town so there's charm. Um, oh, I mean, even me talking about it is making me so happy. I hope I finish this one. I can't wait to see what else happens in the story but this is a definite, definite must, pick, must pick up and even if you don't read it during Christmas, you can read it for throughout the rest of the year. All right, the next one is Seven Days of Us by Francesca Horn Hor Hornack. Yes, that's how you would say that. So this is the story of a family that has adult siblings that are already grown and out of the home. One of the siblings is a doctor and I think he works overseas. Before um, he, he comes home and finds out that he's been around something, I don't know what he was around, but something that he needs to be quarantined for. Well, before he went on his trip, he was around his brothers and sisters, so they too now need to be quarantined. So they're all quarantined to their childhood home over the holidays for seven days. Now, these relationships between these brothers and sisters are not the best. Um, so there's gonna be some family drama going on, but that can sometimes be kind of funny. So um, I'm excited to pick this one up and see what happens to these brothers and sisters. Next up, I have Let It Snow. So this is a compilation story written by um, John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. But um, so it's, I think it's just like a lighthearted, fun, kind of romantic read. On the very back, it says, um, all the magic of the holidays come to life in three hilarious and charming interconnected tales of love, romance, and kisses that will steal your breath away. So I love books like that where you're reading it and it's like three or whatever, totally different stories and then something happens and they all kind of come together and click and make sense and it sounds like that's going to happen in this book around the holiday season. So I'm excited to pick this one up. 
Um, the last one I have to show you is not necessarily a Christmas book, but I think it's a really great book to read at the end of the year as we're starting a new year to kind of center you and get you reconnected with the real meaning of life. I know we just went deep there for a second, but this is the last lecture by Randy Posh. So, um, his last lecture, you can actually watch him give the full lecture on YouTube. Just search this and his lecture will pop up. I've actually never watched that because I'm a big baby and I know I will bawl my eyes out. Um, but I think I'm ready. And I saw this at Goodwill and I picked it up because I thought this would be really good to have in a paper form where I can kind of mark it up and highlight things as I'm reading along because I'm sure there's going to be lots of life lessons and goodness to kind of hold on to when I'm reading this one. So. In case you don't know the story of this, Randy was diagnosed with um, terminally ill cancer and he decided to use his last lecture, he's a professor, um, as a way to kind of share the meaning of life, things that he had learned in his life and things that he wanted to leave behind for his children to um, have, to grow up with and lessons and morals and all of those kind of things. So this is just his story and it's little and I think it's something I can definitely read this month without being too overwhelmed with everything else that's going on. Here's a picture of Randy on the back with his children. Let me see if the camera will focus. Come on camera, don't focus on my face. There we go. So already talking about this, I have this like, in my heart, but I think it's one of those books that it's good to read. It needs to be read and I'm excited to own it so that I can read it. All right. Thank you for bearing through that with me. This is my very first ever like sit down and talk about the books chat. It's hard to do that. I can talk about children's books until the cows come home, but talking about adult books that I have not read and finding the words to describe them is a little bit hard. Hopefully I get better as I go along though, because I really want to chat books more often on here because it is such a big part of my life. Anyways, I am off to work. I will see you guys around these parts tomorrow. I hope you're having a fabulous day. See you later. Bye.